Hello there. Welcome to my session setup tutorial video. In this uh, tutorial, we're going to be talking about how I set my sessions up uh, when I import a whole bunch of tracks from a client, what I do to stay organized, um, kind of how I get everything routed and sent to the master fader. And um, depending on how long that goes, uh, we might talk about some gain staging and a little bit of... Uh, what I do to kind of keep everything separated. So we'll just jump right into it. Um, I am in Pro Tools and I am on a Mac. So all of the key commands I'm saying are for the Mac keyboard. Um, another big thing I must stress is if you're on a laptop and you're producing, uh, spring for the extended extra keyboard. That is going to give you a lot more key commands um, than what you would think, and uh, it applies to a lot more DAWs too. So, um, and this information should apply across the board. Uh, you should be able to take what I'm giving you and apply it to your DAW and uh, use it to help your session out. So, let's jump into it. I am going to go uh, Shift Command I, and that's going to import. I am going to go to where I know I have the files. Um, now, the files we are working with, uh, it's from a session that's in the Cambridge Library, which they have a bunch of uh, multi-track sessions, different genres that you can mix. Really cool. I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, this band's called Last Legacy. The song's called Who's Who in Hell. Um, I've already mixed and mastered this song Um so that's why I've already got all the files, but we're just going to go ahead and pull everything in fresh. Now I hit copy, um, so that way it copies a whole separate copy of this audio and it puts it in your session folder. And then it's going to ask me what I want to do with them. I want them to be at the session start and I want them to be a new track. And what that's going to do is that's going to import all of them as a new track, and it's going to populate by itself. Um, control, Option, Command, Down makes all the tracks the same size. Um, now what I like to do first is I'll create a click track. Bring that to the top. I'll create a master fader. A stereo master fader. Bring that to the bottom. Um, an easier way to do that is Shift Command N. I'm going to create stereo auxiliary inputs, um, and we're going to make eight of them. Master is always at the bottom. Um, we are going to call this one here Submaster. And what we're going to do is shift click and make them the same color. Color coding is very key to staying organized. Uh, you really, really need to make that an essential thing of what you're doing. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to double click on one and I'm going to call this a drum sub. Uh, hold shift command and press down and it's going to go to your next. I'm going to call that bass sub. Shift command down. I'm going to call that guitar sub. I'm typing illiterate today. Shift command down. We're going to call that lead vokes. And shift command down. We're going to call that background. Folks. All right. So, all we've done is we've imported all of our audio, we've set up, uh, we've created a click track, um, we've got all of our subs set. Now, if you hit command and equal, it's going to bring you to the mix window. And we're looking here and I'm seeing kick trigger, kick sample, kick. So, that's going to require a sub group there. And then I'm seeing multiple snares, samples, triggers. So that's going to require another subgroup. So what we're going to do is go down here. 
we're going to grab these two, bring them up here. We're going to call this guy kick sub and then shift command down. We're going to call this snare sub. We're going to bring the snare sub just after the snares. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and shift click and then I'm going to go shift and I'm going to hold option and I'm going to click the output and then I'm going to set that go to track and go to kick sub. Now I'm going to go to my kick sub and I'm going to set the output to the track for the drum sub. Okay. So what that is doing is that it's taking my kick, all three of my kick sounds, and it's sending all three of those to this bus here, this auxiliary input. This is a bus. Um, and it is taking all of those kick sounds in and it is routing them out to the drum sub. Okay. Um, so that is what a bus is. I'm creating a bus for my kicks. So that way they are all coming through one fader and then going out as one kick sound. That's what I want to do. Same thing with the snares. Click, shift, click, and then shift, option, and hold those two. Output, track, snare sub. Bam. Okay. Now you can see incoming snare sub outgoing output one and two no we want that to be you got it drum sub bam so we've got that set up um let me organize these a little bit where's my hi-hat i guess they didn't give me a hi-hat just overheads okay so tom same thing i'm gonna highlight all the toms by holding shift and clicking now this is new, I don't have another auxiliary track. What I'm gonna do is shift option and click output again, but I'm gonna to go to new track. I'm gonna make that a stereo auxiliary input and we're gonna call that Tom sub. And that's gonna go right after the tracks. And then you just wanna to go to output, track, drum sub. Sounds confusing, but it's not. Just look at what you're doing. Toms, all the toms together. They're going to go out to the tom sub. The tom sub is a bus. It's an auxiliary input. It's just an open channel for you to take all of this audio and put it all into this open channel. Think of it like water. You're just dumping it all into this open channel. And then it's going to take it from this channel and you can process it all together and then send it out to the drum sub in which you can process all the drums together. So it's just giving you options. It's a way to stay organized. Now what we're gonna do is go over here. I've got overheads and a bell sample, that's fine. I'm not gonna do anything with those. Uh, bass DI, that's gonna go to track, bass sub. Now remember I said, or the color coding for the tracks, very important, cause look, now that we're done with the drums, we're starting to get in bass and guitar, we have no idea what's what. So we're gonna go ahead and do some color coding here. Um, what you can do to highlight tracks without highlighting everything, because I don't want to highlight kick sub, right? So what I'm going to do is go over here. I'm going to select all of my drums down to the bell sample. And now I'm going to just hold command and I'm going to hit the subs just to get them off of here. Now I can go down here and double click on the little color bar and we can make our drums a cool color. All right. Now another uh, cool and really important thing to remember is if you hold command and press S, the solo button on these uh, subtracks, it's gonna solo safe them. So that way so that way you can still hear them. So we're gonna go same thing, bass, I always make bass poop brown. So you get the idea across the board, right? Okay. We're going to come back here. Um, I'm, I'm not doing everything. I'm just showing you the basics of what I do for the sake of time. Now, we've got everything in. We've got everything routed. We've got everything sorted. 
what I want to do is gain stage my clips. Okay. Uh, what that means is every clip comes in with a different gain. Um, here in Pro Tools, what you can do is select the clip, the audio, go up to Audio Suite, come down to Other, and pull up your gain plugin. Uh, with this clip highlighted, you can hit Analyze, and it'll tell you how many dB the average is for that clip. Um, I want to gain stage everything to negative 6 dB. That's just me. So what I'm going to do is hold Command, and I'm going to hit this little fader, and I'm going to pull that down the difference to get to about my negative 6. Boom. Negative 6. That's right where I want it. Now, I hit Analyze. I find negative 6, and I leave it at that. I don't render this clip, because then it's going to make a whole other clip over here, and you don't need that. That's going to cloud up your session real quick. So just go here, select the clip, analyze, don't render. Adjust it right here. Every, every clip's going to be different. So we'll look at this one. Analyze, negative 3.7, negative 3.3. Zero. So you see what I mean. It's easier to start with everything in one area. Then you can go through and mix them down rather than starting with everything crazy. That's gain staging in a nutshell. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some memory locations. This is a great example of why you want to have a extended full keyboard. Um, so for the shortcut for that, we're going to hold command five and that brings up the memory location. Now what I can do with a memory location is I can select my drums. So I'll take everything out, leave all of my my submaster and my master in. And we will go control option command down to make everything the same size. And then what I'm going to do is just click enter on the numerical pad and I'm going to set my time properties to none, my track visibility and track heights, and then I'm going to name it drums, enter. So now I'm going to deselect my drums, and I'm going to select my bass and my bass sub. Control Option Command down. That brings everything the same size. And I always send my subs to my submaster. And then my submaster goes into my master output one and two, which is my master fader. So now that I have all my bass set up and everything where I want it, I hit enter on the numerical pad. Time properties to none. I rename it bass. I have track visibility and track height set. And then I hit OK. So what that's going to do is allow you to go through here and set different things right here so you can switch through easily and find what you're looking for. Now if I hold command enter and I look through these memory locations, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to change all my faders so I can come through here and mix pretty easily and go to the base and you know what I mean, do what I need to do here and then I can come back and it just makes things a lot easier. So that's the basics of setting up my session. I, I kind of ran through it really fast. Um, to try to keep the video short. So if you guys have any questions, email me planetary recording at outlook.com and uh, let me know what you guys think. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I appreciate it.